Hello and welcome to Infinity. Here we've got a pretty grey, hazy picture. Let's see if we can do something with it. So, when you look at something and it is kind of grey throughout, there's no real lights and darks in it. First thing to do is look at the histogram. So if I go up here and look at this, I can see here, because this goes from dark here to light here, there's only a limited shade of grey effectively being used. So darks to lights there. So we need to stretch this out. And the way to do that is with levels. You can do it with auto levels, but that's destructive. But let's get a bit more control over it and put in an adjustment, which we could always go back to. So I go to levels here and this. Bring in the blacks up to the edge there. And more significantly, if you can see the change here, bring this one down to the edge there. So now you can see a lot more of the things that are in the picture. You can sometimes try to use gamma. Does that do anything? I don't think so in this case. So Now then, I'm going to try and do a dehaze on it. But dehaze is destructive. So I need a new layer to work with that with. So I go to Layer and Merge Visible. And this will put in a new layer above here, which contains exactly the same as what we looked at before here. And now we're going to do the dehaze on this. We're going to just click on these, by the way. Let's name things as we go through. So the levels there was fix histogram. The next one is going to be dehaze. OK. And so I go to Filters and Haze Removal. And this now gives us a little bit of control on this. As you can see here, if I move the distance down here, you can see the way it's actually the line going across there. It's detecting how far out this is. It's going on a diagonal there because you can see that this is a hill here. But actually, as it goes out there, the dehazing goes into the distance. And I quite like it up there because it's getting this mountain out a bit. So what does strength do? Strength is, I quite like the way that's bringing the mountain out more. However, in here, it's making it go a little bit on, on the kind of yucky side. Can we fix that with the exposure correction? No, we're losing the mountain again here. So I'm just going to apply that. And I want to put a mask on that now too. So I just keep the top bit and get rid of the bottom bit. And the way I'll do that is I'll go to a mask here, click the mask layer, and it puts one under here. And uh, this is working like this, by the way, because up here an assistant manager, I've got adding adjustment layers as a new layer mask as a child layer so it's happening like this over here and filters as a new layer so they'll all appear above one another so what i want now is to be able to just to pick out that mountain bit so i'm going to make sure i've got the mask selected hit Control i and that inverts it so nothing is selected so i need to paint it back so i need a paintbrush and go to colors and i want the white color here to paint onto this black here. You can see this is coming over here. So I've got opacity at 33, hardness at zero, so it's very soft. So I can paint it a bit at a time. I'm just going to keep the top of this here. So I brought out more than that here. So I've used the dehaze in the distance. In fact, it's a little bit too much, I think. Let's just take the top there because I don't want this much going to green and things down there. In fact, what I can do is, is pick the black and just paint that back in there. That's it. So I'm just keeping the mountain. There we go. Right, what we're going to do next. Um, I think I'm going to do a little bit of curves here. So if I click on that and click on curves here, then what I'm going to do is to try and get more of the sky in here. So this is really about the sky. So I pull this down here. 
You can see there's a bit more detail appears in the sky there, actually darkens the mountain as well. So I can do another bit of masking like that again. So I've got a built-in mask here. I'm going to call this sky. Sky darken. And control I to invert it. So that it's not being applied. And then get the paintbrush. Make sure it's white. I can just paint a bit more of that sky back there. So that's the only bit I'm using from using that curves there. But it's keeping up the dark of the mountain, putting a bit more detail into the sky. Okay, so maybe we can do a little bit more contrast in this. And the way we can do this is use the adjustment here and go to brightness and contrast. And if I turn up the contrast first, so I'm getting a bit more contrast across the picture, so that's bringing that up a bit more and that adds darkness. You can maybe bring back a little bit more lightness when you do that. It's one reason the brightness and the contrast are together because you tweak one and you might want to tweak another one. So there we go. This is that getting a lot better now, isn't it? Right, okay. That's good. So I'll just call that just contrast adjustment. Contrast overall. Now the one of the things that's slightly annoying this is this down here you can see there's like a blue bin and it's just distracting as it catches our eye. So I'll zoom into that and I'm going to try and reduce that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to an HSL. So I go adjustments and HSL. Now that I'm just going to pick this colour here. So I'll just go to the blue, go to the colour picker there and click on that. Try a few clicks to see where it is. Yeah, it's all about there. That's fine. And then just bring down the saturation of that. So it just becomes less noticeable. And a good way to do this is control zero, go back out again, is Look at this area here. You can see if I turn it right up, I can see where it's all affected. So the mountains, the sky is going to be affected a bit. So I just want to turn that down there to affect just the bin. And then I'm going to do the invert and paint back method. So I hit Control I to invert it, get a paintbrush, and I'm going to paint that back in white and reduce this right bit and just zoom in again to that. And I can actually turn the opacity kind of right up with this because it's only that area because it's only affecting the blues. So there you are, that's brought that right down. And see, I click on the, the blue there, and that's, that's where it is. So I can recheck that. It's getting that's about right, that's fine. And I'll call that bin blue bin fix. Now then, what else do you want to do? Well, one of the things is around here, this wooden walkway, there's some nice reds in it. What if we can bring that out? So there's reds in here as well. Let's see if we can bring out that. So let's do another HSL. And for this, click on the reds. Use the picker to pick on this wooden bit here, so it's more around the orangey area here. What about in here? Yeah, it's more around there. So I can hold the middle button here and slide this round a bit. And yeah, let's put it into that orange. And I'll just turn up the saturation there. You can see the way that's bringing that out more? Do you not have to go far? And then turn the luminosity down to Darken that off a little bit. You don't want it to be too exciting. I'm looking at the things down here as well. If those are get, look, getting a little bit too much attention, I can still just paint black on that. So I go to the paintbrush, make sure I've got black, and paint over this just to bring down that effect there. So that's not being affected by this HSL here. Right. Now then, what else can I do? Um, 
let's do something with this tree. It would be nice if that tree was just a bit brighter. I'm just going to select it to do that. If I just paint on it, I'm going to create halos. So it needs to be quite closely done. So I go to the selection brush, paint over here. I've got snap to edges on here and the soft edges on, of course, just to get the whole thing. And now I go to refine. I'm going to paint over this to get this all just nicely done and just do it a bit at a time. Here we go. Just need to go around pretty much the all of this and look at the bits on the inside as well. Let's try a bit more here. It's just the green bit of the tree I want. I don't want the trunk. There you go. That's good enough. Try that again, please. Maybe that bit. There you go. Now then, what I want is to do another HSL. So I'll go to Adjustments, HSL here. Because this will automatically pick up the mask from this, I can get rid of the marching ants with Control D now. So now when I adjust this, it's just going to be the tree. So I can just turn up this. In fact, what I'll do is Control 0 to go back out again, because I need to see it in the context of everything else. So up like that's too much. But where can I go there? Maybe up to up here a bit, but again, take the luminosity back down just to darken it a bit. See the way it's pulled that tree out now, it stands out a bit more. So get it to the level that you like on that. So what next? Um, so that was, what was that? Which one was that? That was the walkway, wasn't it? Let's keep up with the names. It's useful. You can then find it again. Tree. So now what I'm going to do is let's do a, a, actually, if I look into this, I've noticed this in here. This is pretty noisy. If I go into here, you can see the noise all around here. So let's do a little denoise. So I go to live filters and denoise. And just watch this as I turn this up here. And there's a point at which sometimes it's better actually to zoom right into this. There you go. See, look at the, that noise there. Now, as I turn this out up, it's gradually going to point. It's going to smooth out. It's, that's just the point you want to get to. You don't want to go any further. But that's a, an effective denoise. It's just noise reduction. I don't need to name that because this is just a global denoise. And then I'll do a sharpen on top of that to see if you can bring up the other areas. So I'll go to unsharp mask radius. I usually put to one and control with the factor. Now bring this up here. You can watch for noise coming back in again here as well. Maybe tweak that. See that's got a bit noisier as I brought the factor up. See the variation in there, so I'm now go back to the noise reduction. If I turn that up a little bit more, there's a point at which it's not going to do anything, so I'm just going to limit the amount of noise here. Just use the top two, just ignore the threshold, that's seldom useful. Although, having said that, sometimes when there's noise, just turn it up a little bit can help. Yeah, there we go, I've got up two percent. So now I can turn up the factor a bit more without doing that. Let's, fact, let's turn that down to 1% because that will affect things very quickly. So control zero. Yeah, I think that's a bit better. That's brought this out a bit more as well, hasn't it? So now just a final thing. Let's crop it. And the rule of thirds, though, look, the tree is on. Well, that was probably deliberate when I was taking the photograph. Uh, I don't need all this foreground here and this orange in this is bothering me. So I'm going to bring this up here. And here's a question. It, this leading down, should you go at the side? Or should you go at the bottom? But we tend to, we sometimes read a picture from the bottom upwards because it's, this is like in front of us. So we look at what we're going to have to hit next. So if we bring that up 
here now this is coming out to the bottom so we catch the bottom of this as we go up and apply that and how's that look also what we do is we read left to right so what if we flip it go to document flip horizontal now it's going from the bottom there coming up there and we can come in a little bit here i think maybe if we just to bring this in just a little bit here so it's just on the edge of that diagonal there and i'll bring in this side as well so that curved going down there i just want to go back to continue out as opposed to bumping back up again it's visually better if that just goes down like that don't worry if that's not exactly on the thirds that doesn't matter it's only approximate and uh, there we go there's our finished picture that's gone quite a long way from let's go down to turn that off before and after that's good i've kept the the crop on the turn but you can see there in fact if i go the to the history and pull that all the way back like that that was the original picture and then pull that all the way back up and that's the the final one that's it and thank you very much for watching